Hi, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to take you through Azure Network Architecture. One of the fundamental building blocks of Azure Network Architecture is Virtual Network. Basically, this is where you can define your range of IP addresses, you can define DNS settings and everything which I'm going to take you through in the next lecture anyway. But you can think of Virtual Network is a representation of your own network on the cloud. And within this virtual network, you can subdivide the IP address range into multiple segments, i.e. in other words, subnets. So for example, you can create a subnet to host all the web servers. You can create subnets to hold your app servers. And also you can create a subnet to hold databases, gateways. And if you have a firewall, you can create a separate subnet to install the firewall. So basically, you can divide your virtual network into number of subnets to host different Azure resources. Those Azure resources can be Azure virtual machines, they can be databases, and it can be Azure VPN gateway that you deploy in gateway subnet. One key thing that you need to remember when it comes to gateway subnet, if you created a gateway subnet and deployed a gateway in that subnet, you can't install any other resources in that subnet. I'm going to take you through in detail of this anyway in the subsequent lectures. Within virtual appliance subnet, you can install any third party virtual appliances. So for example, it can be firewall. And one key thing that you need to remember is all the Azure resources that has been installed in a particular virtual network can talk to each other by default using system routes. I haven't depicted that in this diagram because if I start showing those links, the diagram will get complicated. So please remember any resources in a virtual network can talk to each other by default. However, if you want to isolate these resources from each other and if you want to filter the traffic, then you can use something called network security groups. This is where you can define some rules in order to either allow or deny incoming traffic and similarly either allow or deny outgoing traffic from that particular subnet. We have a dedicated lecture on network security groups where I'm going to show you how you can define these NSG rules. By default, there will be some default rules, which I'm going to explain also in that lecture. And in terms of high availability, you can have an external load balancer, which will balance the loads between your Azure virtual machines. So basically, you can create a load balancer within Azure and configure the endpoints for that load balancer. The load balancer will continuously monitor these virtual machines. If one virtual machine is down, it will automatically route the traffic to the other virtual machine. External load balancer is to balance the traffic that is coming from the internet to multiple virtual machines. And if you want to balance the traffic internally, then you can create an internal load balancer and balance the traffic between your application servers. And both of these load balancers provide layer four load balancing capabilities. And in case if you want to have more granular control on load balancing, so for example, URA specific routing, then you can have an application gateway in order to get the layer seven load balancing capabilities. Again, we have dedicated lectures on load balancing and application gateways where I'm going to explain the difference between these layer four and layer seven load balancing capabilities. And one final thing is if you want to control the traffic, for example, if you want to route all your outgoing internet traffic through a firewall, then you can define a user route. By default, the system routes will enable all the Azure resources in a virtual network to talk to internet. And if you want to route all the outgoing internet traffic through a firewall, you can define the same using user defined route. So this is all about how everything comes together within the virtual network, but you can have multiple virtual networks like this in your subscription. When you register for Azure, you will have a tenant. Under tenant, you will have multiple subscriptions. Under each subscription, you can have multiple virtual networks. So if you want to connect two virtual networks with each other, there are two ways that you can achieve. The first one is peering. If you have virtual networks within the region, then you can peer those virtual networks. We have a dedicated lab where I'm going to show you how to do this peering. But to achieve the VNet peering, both these virtual networks should exist in the same region. And if you have a virtual network that is existing in a different region, then you can use VPN to VPN connection. So these are the two ways that you can connect virtual networks. However, Azure is famous for its hybrid cloud capabilities. 
So there are two key ways that you can connect your on-premise data center network with this virtual network. The first one is site-to-site -site VPN using which you can connect your on-premise network over the internet with Azure virtual network. However, if you want to have that connection between your on-premise network and virtual network as a private connection, then you can go for express route. The express route is a bit costly when compared to site-to-site -to -site VPN. But anyway, let's not go into the detail. I'm going to explain about these capabilities in detail in their own dedicated lectures. That's it. This is how the Azure network architecture looks like. In the subsequent lectures, I'm going to take you through in detail of these capabilities and we will do lots of labs where we are going to create virtual network, we are going to create subnets, deploy resources, do some load balancing exercises and all those stuff. See you in the next lecture.